Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. We've got a lot of things going on in this episode, but uh, the first thing we've got going on is monsters. Monsters in this game. There it is. Did you see it? It was there. It was a creeping. It was creeping. It's a surface drifter. These guys uh, honestly creep me out. They creep me out more than possibly any monster from any other game honestly like a lot of games they're so weird i don't like yeah i know they're lovecraftian influenced inspired but still uh, they they really creep me out they kind of they're kind of faceless hunched over creepy goblin stance just i don't know it's it's, it's got me it got me um so you're gonna be seeing a lot of these but that's our first creature and I'm glad I had that five day grace because honestly just kind of getting my feet firmly planted in the ground and getting my base sorted and getting uh, a spear and some supplies was enough to uh, give me the confidence to take these guys out now yeah like I said we'll be seeing more of those and others of its ilk later but for now um, it's gonna be a pretty busy episode I'm doing a lot as much as I can oh yeah that cave-in shocked the heck out of me. Uh, we're doing uh, as much as we can to basically get ourselves to the copper age. Um, so we actually have a pickaxe. It takes ages, ages and ages. There's our first wolf just kind of vibing in the water. I don't know what their deal was, but they didn't seem interested in me. And thank goodness, because uh, later we'll find out just exactly how dangerous those are. We got some onions. Farming is another thing we're going to want to get going, but... Um, as I say, copper toolage is is the first priority. Um, although my priorities seem to change on on whatever whim has me at the moment. Um, but yeah, so how do you get crafting uh, copper tools off the ground? So like I say, you can't just make stone tools in this game. It's not like Minecraft. There's so much involved. There's a lot of stuff going on. You got to make your charcoal pit. We made our charcoal pit. And uh, we got some more bony material here. I, I found another ruin. Um, once you've got your char charcoal, um, you want to start gathering copper. We got some copper here. If you find copper on the surface, it does indicate a vein. And you can open up your map and uh, put a waypoint down. So you're going to want to do that because um, basically when it, wherever you found copper, there's probably more copper underneath the ground. Probably worth checking. Um, and once you have copper tools, you're going to want to dig that up because you're going to need more copper. This game is it's all about getting them resources. So, yeah. Um, so once you have copper nuggets, the game, will, like the, the helpful guide does tell you exactly. I loved this mist here. This it was really nice. A um, little bit of atmosphere. Well, the game does tell me tell you how many nuggets you need exactly. But... Um, you know, I, I can't remember. It seems to be about a hundred units of copper per tool, um, tool head, basically. And uh, you get about five nuggets per, or sorry, five units per nugget. Then later you get chunks, and then those chunks kind of vary in quality. Um, but we're not going to worry about those until we get copper toolage going on. So um, you are going to need a hundred copper units to get your copper pickaxe if you are sick of hearing me say copper uh you might as well turn this video off now because i'm going to be saying copper about 10 bajillion more times or also um here i i don't quite uh, get into it but I, I do start deep diving into leather leather is, an, is a whole other thing in this game and uh it's something i'm gonna have to figure out more later but uh, if, if you have been paying close attention my uh, supplies of leather or basically uh, raw hides has been increasing steadily as I find various dead animals around. Um, I do really appreciate some of the extra like attention to details and little things in this game and one of those things is that animals hunt other animals and you can just kind of find them, uh, find their carcass and, and uh, you know basically take what is left of them and sometimes that is also just food and uh, you know pelts and, and and whatever so it's nice you can you can do a bit of scavenging which is a, a nice little feature of this game you'll notice now every time I uh, come out from my hovel 
and it, you know, uh, we have to start basically create, you know, I, I don't know how to do doors yet. That's something I figure out later. So now it's just, you know, basically blocking up the, the hole in the wall with dirt. Every time I step out now after a, a you know, night's rest, I have this awkward look on my face of like, is there a creature and do I have to be worried? Um, here we are gathering our charcoal in preparation for um, smelting our first copper nug. That's going to be pretty exciting. Every every little thing in Vintage Story feels like a victory, and that's something I really appreciate about it. Honestly, if, you know, um, speaking from my own personal experience, I think that on, in terms of a survival experience, Vintage Story has been the most enjoyable for me. I've played a few survival games, and none of them have really kind of, uh, you know, resonated with me as much as Vintage Story, so I really appreciate it for that. So, you know, as, as well, long as we're trying to get pelts going, I, I do a, quite a lot of exploring here, and there's some really interesting landscapes around. We find some various different ores and, and uh, chunks of this is and that's in the in the in the wall and the mountains. Um, we do want to hunt ourselves a couple of animals and hopefully not be hunted ourselves. I really liked this area. This is a, a neat little area of of mountainage with a stream kind of coming out of the wall. It was really nice. We found some lead ore and. I do basically anything of interest, uh, I do mark on the map, including if I find a nugget on the surface, I generally mark on the map. Um, as well as if I find uh, any like growing, um, you know, plant uh, of any kind, any, any like farmable plant, like a turnip or an onion or something, um, I don't want to break it until it's mature, so I mark it on the map, and then hopefully I'll get more than uh, more seeds. Because when you find them, they're going to be like, you know, uh, halfway mature, right? You don't want to break them yet, because you're only going to get the one seed. Farming is something we're going to get started in the next episode. Probably something I should be already working on, but you know, one thing at a time, and I wanted to prioritize copper tools. So here we are panning. I do a lot of panning. Um, I have mercifully cut out even a montage of the amount of panning I have done in order to get all of the required copper nuggets. You're welcome for that. There was a lot of panning. <laughs> um, yes, I could have just done exploration in order to find them, but uh, I realized after a while that th that was kind of a, you know, dice roll, uh, whether or not I was going to find the copper nuggets, whereas panning the, um, you know, through the uh, clay stone gravel was it was just kind of a matter of time here I am trying to make things a little bit more homely with some torches and I, I do love this attention to detail that the torches do get put out by the rain so now I have to give them a nice little roof so here here I've cut out about uh, you know half an hour of me panning through uh, a mountain of claystone uh, gravel and you can see that the my rewards are meager uh, to say the least about four copper nuggets which is equivalent to 20 units of copper not enough for a tool yet so I go exploring you know you got to break up the monotony and uh, hey I found some mushrooms mushrooms are going to be significant in the next episode as we finally get a meal preparing off the ground but for now um, they're just another thing kind of cluttering up our inventory. Coming up uh, real shortly is a genuine reaction from me and our first death. Uh, please enjoy that. Fuck! Heck yeah, wolf boy. Wolf boy demolished us. Wolves are absolutely savage in this game absolutely savage uh, and and that it will not be our first encounter with, with wolf boy i am not exactly sure um how or what i'm supposed to make create wear a uh, wield in order to take on the wolf but uh they are vicious they they absolutely uh chase you down they can they'll actually chase you down for a couple miles if you're if you <laughs> if you are actually running away from them um by the way running is a thing you can do in this game you'll you'll you might have noticed i haven't actually done any of it <laughs> yet because i didn't actually know it was a thing i thought that moving at 
Uh, like we, I thought we were always moving at like the max speed. There was no sprinting. I tried to do the whole like Minecraft sprinting thing, but it didn't work. Apparently pressing control toggles sprinting. And yeah, you do burn through more stamina. So uh, here's my first blunder with copper. Um, I prematurely start like, oh, I'm so excited. I've got enough. I finally have enough to uh, smelt the copper. And yes, I did have enough to smelt and I did have enough units to actually get make the copper tool. But what am I doing? Uh, I'm doing this way too soon because I don't have the mold yet. I had to make the mold and I had to fire the mold and that was going to take about 24 hours. N n yeah, so like painfully painfully unprepared for for copper uh copper smelting that's not the first mistake or uh sorry that's not the last mistake you'll see from me regarding copper we'll get to it later so new day new monsters let's see oh there there he is there's their surface dweller I start, I do actually um, kind of get a bit more confidence with these guys. I can almost uh, fight them now without uh, taking any damage and, because I have a bit more experience, spoilers, but um, something is going to happen later uh, and I, ha I get a bit more combat experience with the surface dwellers, but they don't scare me any less uh, now than uh, here, basically. Oh, and there's another one snuck up on me from behind the tree that one genuinely scared me honestly like shook me um i discover in our inventory I, we have some rot uh, i'm not exactly sure where it came from I, I probably uh held on to some food for too long and didn't eat it which is a, a shame but the rot will come in handy uh as we'll be able to put it in uh, one of our like um storage containers and turn it into something useful uh, for soil. I love this little like attention to detail. Uh, if you missed it, um, you can you can throw them maple seeds. I think I think they're maple. They might not be maple, but uh, basically, they they uh, they'll spin. They spin when they fall, and I, I love that little little attention to detail. That's just so so good. Um, so uh, you can see I'm getting my roof together there. Uh, that is so that I can basically check on the time of day, what kind of, oh yeah. I forgot about this. I woke up the wolf and then, and then I didn't realize it was a wolf and then immediately started getting savaged by it. Oof, yeah, there's our second death. You're welcome. Um, seems like you'll see this, this is good. Um, wolf boy is just kind of there. Maybe they didn't notice me, but uh, I noticed them and I wasn't sure if I was gonna die again, but I was like, yeah, I'll take some sticks and leave now, goodbye. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we are, we're, we're slowly working on the roof uh, and turning our hovel into a mini fortress with some palisades, basically. I'm hoping, uh, well, when I at the time of making that roof palisade, I was kind of hoping to use it for defenses and uh, we'll see we'll see later uh, whether that pans out or not you could see i was just looking up um, how to turn rot into something useful uh, that'll likely come up later this was terrifying i don't know what was up but you could see i was hunting a fox and then something giant just kind of like burst out of the forest and i didn't know where it went i didn't know what happened where did it go my best my best uh, guess is that it fell into a hole. There was a little hole there. And I think the wolf, I think it was a wolf. And I think it fell into the hole. And uh, almost it would have savaged me for sure. There's our first lump of fat. Lump of fat is going to become very, very important later. Um, for now, it's another thing that I don't understand. At least at the time that I recorded this. I understand it now and I have... I have the wisdom of, of the lump of fat, but you can see, you'll see maybe in this episode what I do with it. Um, yeah, you, I, I, mean, I almost wanted to do like a, like no, a roofless house so I could watch, you know, see, see what time of day is. But um, I do look through and I see, yeah, what we can do with the lump of fat. And I do craft an oiled hide. And why did I do this? Honestly, I didn't know the process of like tanning leather basically I didn't understand anything 
but I was like, well, I'll make this since I can and then I'll just shove it in the storage container. Not knowing that that is exactly how to tan leather. You oil it and then you put it in the storage container and wait. <laughs> so I did it exactly correctly. Um, and I guess that's not tanning leather so much as, um, well, I don't know, I guess uh, preparing it. There's a whole process when it comes to leather and what I'm making right now is basically a pelt and uh, given more time and process, you can turn that pelt into actual tanned leather, uh, which becomes more of a generic uh, material for other things in the future. So we finally uh, start putting together some stuff for copper smelting, copper forging, and we have our uh, smelted copper and finally put together our copper pickaxe. And that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time.